Hello. Hey, hello. hello. Is it just us right now? There we are. Yes, it is just us for right now. The beginning of the party. <laughs> yeah, I figured I'd give people some time. Fine. Yeah, to just, uh, how was your day today? I got some of your messages, so I kind of know how your day is going <laughs> a little bit. I mean, it's a little, it's interesting. <laughs> I'm here, right? Yeah. It's been yeah. an interesting few weeks for probably everyone. Yeah, I love I love your hair. Just by the way, you just look. <laughs> it's not. It's a mess. <laughs> you you said no. It's it's not what it normally looks like. I wanted to do it on a good weekend after I got my hair done. That didn't happen. <laughs> my hair's <laughs> overdue. Oh, we'll have plenty more. We'll have plenty more. It's nice to see you. It is nice to see you live. I know all the times we talk. We're always on the phone. <laughs> I know. So I know that this is live right now. It is streaming on Facebook, so people will be able to on the group see us right now and um, what we're doing. I'll be able to see comments. I think actually we should all be able to see comments on here when people say things. Yeah. So yep. I get them some more time. Okay, well, that's interesting. So I think it may end up being us on this, which I'm not sure, which is totally okay. Um, Completely okay. Yes. Because, we'll be a one and we'll see who is going to end up joining us eventually. Yeah. Sometimes it takes people a while. I know in ones that I've done in the past, like people will end up figuring it out and popping in like 10 minutes from now or whatever from now, but people may pop in. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And if not, we're going to make the best of it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So our agenda was really about dividing up responsibilities and hopefully we start getting some activity from the group, right? That's the the goal. I know yeah. there were quite a few people that have like messaged us and emailed us, but I wonder if it's just a timing thing and it's been a rough couple of weeks for probably the world. <laughs> so yeah. if that's impacting Especially I feel like us as parents, because I know me and you have talked about just the things that you've done for MJ just in the last couple of weeks. And I had like two IEP meetings in the last month. Exactly. So, you know, we all, I feel like, understand each other, too. We're kind of in this space where we're probably all kind of doing similar things for our kids, too, at the same time. Especially around right now, right? Summer's coming, camps, educational, yeah, everything that people are trying to kind of rev up and kind of ease out of the regular school year into the summer. Yeah. So there's been a lot, a lot probably for most of the parents that are following us. So you can't, ex we, I, I think we're realistic enough to know we can't expect everyone to, to always make it. It would be nice to start, like you said, dividing it up, like, so that it's not all on a few people and spread out because realistically speaking so many autistic parents are already spread thin yeah yeah mm -hmm. for sure which is why i feel like um as time goes on we'll be able to figure th some things out so even the people who are spread thin should be able to do you know one thing because mm -hmm. this is all you know still a goal of ours so we should still at least even make it a goal you know one week to try to do one thing, even a person who has a lot going on. Cause we mm -hmm. all have a lot going on, but there's levels to what we can do. So I think it's just figuring out what we can do and doing that, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's just a group of people that will just share the petition or a group of people that knows teachers. Cause I've had people message me too. So that knows teachers and may try to get them more involved. So I, I feel like me and you have had a lot of people kind of talk to us and it's trying to figure mm -hmm. out how to, yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's a lot of the one-on-one -on -one because I was like inbox, even just from different groups, um, interest. And then people kind of found their way to us, at least to the group via, you know, the Philly Autism Group, the Bucks County one, 
quite a few of those Facebook groups. People were like, I want to be a part of this. They found their way to us. So it's, I know it's, it's clear that they want to do something. So, or they, I mean, what would be the point of being in a group if you're, I agree. Not and really I, and I do feel like something, whether or not it's even those little things, like you said, sharing a petition is doable for some. Yeah. People. And I, I do feel, and this is a personal thing probably, but people did donate to the petition. So that doesn't directly go to us, but it goes to pushing the petition. And even though I can't, you know, use that money to push the petition, I still am going to do what I can do because people are showing that they're invested in this. So even that showing me like, okay, what more can I do? Because, you know, people are showing that that they really believe in this. So, you know, I feel like even talking more about the petition, and I know when we come on here, we start doing this more, I'll be able to share all the people that have signed because the past 20 people haven't been from Philly. So I think sometimes also sharing that with people and letting them know, like, there are really people out here that are behind us and for us and really want to see us do this. You said California. When I looked at the petition, it was interesting. Texas, California. I saw Atlanta, India, New Zealand. And some of these places already have the school, the public school. So for them, it's it's just like, of course, we're going to support you because we have this already. And it's just like, Mm -hmm. oh, we didn't know. So I do even plan on getting some of them to even maybe come on and talk about what their schools do just to show some of these parents that I feel like, you know, that there is hope and that there is such a thing because mm-hmm. some of us don't even know that there is such a thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot, there was a lot of fear. Like, you know, when we first connected, I saw how everyone reacted to your post in the Philly autism Facebook group. And Oh yeah. And that's how we met. So fear. That's how we met. And I was thinking, what are they so afraid of? Like they're acting like this can't be done in the city of Philadelphia. Cause we're an awesome city, right? I'm just like, I mean, we're the city of first, right? We're this, we're we're the city of modern democracy. If you really know your history, right? Like, so this is where it all began. Why wouldn't, and how how do we fall behind, really? And that's, I think, yeah, the most frustrating thing is is to know you you you're in a city that has so much potential and started so many things, and yet it's in when this it area, today. it's weak. Yeah, really, really weak. And I have my son in one of the best elementary schools in the city. And they're big on all kinds of, you know, progressive political, you know, ahead of it. But autism, nope. Yeah. nope. They don't promote it. They don't promote the awareness. I don't think about special needs or autism really at all. I don't even know if they even like recognize the month. I think, you know, they they bring up some other topic that month. Yeah, like <laughs> I know the school board meeting. I was there during Autism Awareness Month, but they barely talked about it. They were just like, "It's Autism Awareness Month," and then here I am, a parent and someone that used to work for the school district with kids with autism, telling you my experience, and you guys still aren't. You're not even taking that for what it is. I'm here during the month, you know. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I agree with you. You're right. There's not. There's. Not, it's not happening. Not at that level. Not at a lot of the schools' levels. And that's the problem. And so, so many kids are actually, you know this from working in the schools, I know this, so many are not getting identified, they're not getting the services that they need while they're young enough to actually have it benefit them. Because if anybody's done their research, you know, there's a process involved here. You know, um, we we see nonverbal children all the time become verbal if they're getting diagnosed early, if they're getting the appropriate supports in place. You know, and so I I find it interesting. I I think with nonverbal children, they get identified because, of course, they're nonverbal, right? It's more obvious. Right. It's easy to kind of be like, yeah. Yeah. So they're a little bit, it's more, it's a little bit more obvious. But if you take that and you you, you remove the example of nonverbal and just look at like the stimming, the sensory overwhelm, the, the way that teachers and other people can interpret it as he's the bad child or she's the bad child Mm -hmm. because, and they're, they're falling through the cracks. They're not getting diagnosed. And a lot of them are ending up on the wrong side of the track, so to speak, educationally speaking. So as someone who also worked in juvenile justice, that's sort of like what led me to become a guidance counselor and a therapist, right? It's all the journey. It's all a part of it. I saw so many um, of the youth in Philadelphia who had disabilities, special needs, um, and then ended up on uh, in the juvenile justice system because they were kicked out of these schools. So we talk about you know, the pipeline to, to prison, 
right? From yeah. school to prison. It's very real. I experienced it. And on the other hand, you know, and I would have these thick, you know, case documentations on these children. And, you know, there was an awareness that was missed too. At some point, they weren't looking at the grades or what was happening there at that level. It was, you know, suspend, suspend really early <laughs> sometimes, yeah. kick out of the school, put them in a disciplinary school. The next thing you know, these children who might have had autism are known to mimic and to try to impress mm -hmm. the children who are cool. And then maybe they're the ones who are manipulated by the children who teach them how to do those things. And a couple of arrests later, a couple more juvenile, you know, centers later, we have a child who had autism and was missed completely. And it all starts in kindergarten, <laughs> first grade, right? It's wow. the roots of this, right? If you really think about it, um, how many people are probably sitting in prison with autism, you know, or, or special needs? It's really sad. And I think in the city of Philadelphia, we should know better at this point. Like we should, this should be getting caught. And I think there's not enough parents who even know what to look for. Yeah. I was being trained in it and still not seeing it fully with my son. My son wasn't officially diagnosed, I think, until he was eight years old, really, or seven. He's 11 now. Okay. And it took, that's how long it takes to get the official diagnosis, right? You suspect it. We started in with Elwin. They were like, well, he's got a 30% developmental delay, but we can't call it autism. You know, it was like, you have to go through all of these extensive yeah. assessment processes for, for children like my son who might appear higher functioning. He's technically moderate. He was really good at masking. Right. So it's which is a really common like learning how to mimic, learning mm -hmm. how to mask um, when in public. But then like the meltdowns would happen at home or, or who he felt or, you know safest with, which is usually yeah. mom, right? Usually mom or parents. Um, so a lot of it wasn't I had to push. I had to go back to child guidance research centers and get an extended assessment before we had the official diagnosis. So, and it took that long. Now the school knew, the school had like, you know, a 504 plan for him. They were waiting on further extended stuff, but you know, it's, it, it shouldn't be this hard. Yeah. And, and if I didn't see it right away, how many other parents are not seeing it? Yeah. And so their children are sitting in, you know, regular ed buildings and they might go the wrong path at some point if it's not caught. And I think with, with an autism, like a school for just autism, you know, the, if there were some sort of admin people at the top of that really going out and bridging to the rest of the schools in the city, and they knew they had this building, they had the resources. I think sometimes it's going undiagnosed because let's be real. The schools are overwhelmed. Yeah. The teachers want another IEP meeting, another 504 meeting. Yeah. Um, they don't know what they're going to do. They may not have, a, you know, an autism support classroom in that building. Um, and so a lot of times these kids are falling through the cracks. But if there's a school that exists, they'd go, let's identify because maybe we have, you know, we could get him into that school if we had to. And when I went to the school board more meeting. Simpler process, a more simpler process instead of lawsuits and you know, private, like waiting tears and years and, and lawsuit battles for private schools. Yeah, because we all can't do that. When I went to the uh, school board meeting, a principal was saying he has two kids on the waiting list and he has other children that could benefit. And it's kind of like he was almost pleading the school district, but even they weren't really listening. And this is a principal saying, hey, I, these students need, need this. They could they use this. this. We don't have it in our school. And yeah, you know and I could tell he felt defeated. And I feel like a lot of educators feel defeated because they don't have a place like this to help these children. So even mm -hmm. in my son's case, when I had to have the second IEP, you know, it's taking months to do something where in a school like this, like the one that I was telling my friend told me about, the IEP would have to be set up within 24 hours versus 10 days, where in 10 days, we could have a whole nother issue we may have to address because of how long it even took to address the first issue. Mm hmm so, yeah. Yeah. So if there was a school like that, what a dream, right? Like, you know, having uh, everyone educated in it, well-trained in it, um, you know, quicker turnaround on meetings, um, you know, you know and, and I sort of envision, and I know it's really the idealist in me, 
you know, Montessori style like setups because so we know that autistic children, you can you have to stop teaching them like they're in this box, right? Like it's not how they think. Yep. They love their specific intense interests. Being outside. They, yes, being outside, playing. They're very natural living, right? Like if we really talk about a lot of you you know a lot of autistic children, you, if you've even just read a lot about it, you know, my son for years didn't even touch meat, right? I was like, did I did I birth a vegetarian? So it's, it's like, I think they almost innately know, you know, some things that maybe mm -hmm. what they should and should not really do for mm -hmm. themselves that we mm -hmm. kind of force on there because what we're used to, but they know what they need if we just kind of don't mm -hmm. force things on them. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And even yeah. with the interest, like you said, like, here's, here's some table sets up here. Who's the artist? Who's the Lego King? Who's the. Like, why aren't we, you know, I, I think we're not embracing a very different sort of setup that would work better for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'd still have like the, you know, the academic on the ones, the behavioral health assistance, you know, the PEC systems for nonverbal, like, you know, all of that would still be in place. Cause I saw that I was in those, those centers, those private schools, Devereaux, I was in multiple of them. Um, so they'd have all of that, but like, I think really just envisioning it looking like, a Montessori private with all the staff and like a whole new system in place for how to kind of handle. I think it would be a joy for them. And I think it would bring the parents together. We're so separated, right? We're all across. Yeah. These and yeah, because that's my biggest schools. thing. When I go to these schools, I'm, I'm cool with the parents, but it's like, I don't know any other parent of a child with special needs. So I'm not even talking. So when, even when we're just talking about some things, me, I don't fully feel like I'm as as involved as I could be because of already the kind of the lack of communication that I'm dealing with that other parents don't really understand. So it kind of feels like I'm in my own separate right. class. Or even if Austin does some things that other parents may not understand, you know, if I'm around parents who have children similar to Austin, regardless of where they are on the spectrum, I know it's a, a judgment free zone. And sometimes mm -hmm. as a parent, all I would like is a judgment-free zone. Wouldn't it be nice? I think that's what our kids want too. I agree. I mean, I think when they get older, they're way more conscious of it. I think now that like, Michael's like entering into this middle school stage and he's he's into puberty right now, I took him to chop. Um, you know, he's really conscious of like that he doesn't quite fit in, which is where that beginning to try to mimic and get in with the cool kids begins. Um, because they're they're just as caught up in that as neurotypical children. Um, but when they're younger, they don't care as much <laughs> when they're younger. I feel like they're just being themselves. <laughs> it's so pure. Who's here. Did someone say I'm trying to get in the link? Yeah. Someone said they're trying to get in a link. It just popped up. Hold on. Let me just check the Facebook link real quick to see if. Mm -mm -mm. Someone said they're trying to get in. Do you have a message from anyone? I don't have a message. See, from I'm going to look at it right now, too. I'm going to see what we're seeing here. Who's trying to get in? <laughs> now I see myself on the page. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. down. Oh, here <laughs> we go. I see my thought. I'm looking down. Oh, here we go. I Okay, so yeah. she's trying to share the link. I, I'm not sure if oh, you can yeah. share the link in the group page because I was looking at that actually. Okay, so she's trying to share the link. I, I'm not sure if you can share the link in the group page. Oops, there we go. Sorry, there we go. Can you hear me better now? I can hear you better now. Okay, great. Um, Yeah, I think she's trying to share the actual link of what we're doing, which I'm not sure if she can share on the group page because of how like Facebook groups are set up because I was trying to figure that out in the settings if that could be the case i will put it on my page and i can i'm going to try to set up a youtube page to put on yeah, there so that people can share that yeah maybe it's a it's let me see if i can share the link real quick because you sent it to me right so yeah I'm, I'm not sure if she then, wants the link or if she's trying to share what we're doing possibly to just i'm, someone. I'm actually going to see if i can do it oh yay thank you did she do it let me see I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to say if it works. Where's the post? 
So wait, people wanted to join us and we had technical difficulties. <laughs> Probably. Yes, we're learning. We're getting together. I, I was trying to invite people. I just shared a link. I don't know if it's going to work. Okay. Yeah, because if you get the invite, which should come in an email or a link, then it would pop up where I would be able to add. Uh, Sh Shari Adler. She's try I'm trying to share the link so I can't find it. Or a link, then it would pop up where I would be able to add. Turning through my notifications on Facebook. Where I would be able to add. I still, I tried to, I sent, I put it in the, I put it in there. And I put the link on the group, but I don't know. You may have to, hmm. It came through my notifications. And I put the link on the group, but I don't know. You may have to. Yeah, okay, we'll we'll definitely figure that out next time. This is our first time kind of using this one, so we'll definitely figure it out. But we can see you commenting things, so if you comment, we'll be able to do it that way as well. But, yeah, next time, um, if we get your email, or I feel like I may have sent out the email, but we can send you an email, and then from that, she said look on the page. Well, that's because looking on the page. Oh, oh, is that you posting that? <laughs> Sherry's oh. friend. She on there? Okay. I mean, I re, I literally reposted it. Let me see if I can get it on there. It's showing like that on the group. Okay. So if people were to hit it, I think it would take them to us. Mm -hmm. At least I would hope. Yep. So. so if you hit it, it'll just pop up. That's what I did. I hit it and it's right yeah. on my Facebook on my phone. Yeah. Oh, I okay. I mean, so hopefully. Mm hmm. Maybe well, if you want to, let me see if you actually do it. Is this a person? Did you did you send one of us your email? Do you want to be a part of it or are you just trying to watch it? I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. If you want to be a part of it, then I can send you a link. But if you're just trying to watch it, then I think you can just click it and then you should be able to watch it like that. I'm trying to figure out. If you want to be a part of it, then I can send you a link. If you don't want to watch it, then I think you can just click it, and then you should be able to watch it like that. I'm trying to figure out. If you want to be a part of it, then I can send okay. you a link. If you don't want to watch it, then I can Okay. I think we're figuring kind of that out. Um. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about, I guess, kind of what really, really made me want to push, like, this sort of thing and the petition was really, you know, my son is three, he's about to be four, and um, he was diagnosed with autism in February of this year. Um, and I was just asking people in the school district, like, is there a school? Is there a school? And like, no one wanted to even give me an answer. It was like, they were almost embarrassed to give me an answer. Like, and yeah. then they finally gave me an answer. They were like, we actually don't have this. We don't have that. We don't have this. And I'm just like, and I do lift because, you know, that's what I have to do to kind of help with my situation. So I speak to like people from Jersey and people from other places who have children with autism who tell me what they have. So then when I hear what other people have and then when I'm like, but they're telling me we don't have this, mm -hmm. it just kind of pushed me to be like, you know what? I can't. We got to do something because it doesn't make oh, sense. So. Point. So. It had to be you, kind of sense. It had to be you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense at this point. <laughs> Like they were embarrassed to say that we didn't. I'm, have I'm, I'm not just upset about this, though. Of course, like I feel like this is only the beginning. Like there are so many things that need reform with this school district, with for autism, the program advocacy. There's not enough. And the whole thing. I actually just started on talking about the Philly Autism page, and I don't know if you want to do it, but I'm trying to see if we can even get neighborhood groups up. Like yeah. even if we had separate, like where you are, because you're in Germantown, right? Um, like area? Logan area. Logan. Like your area, who are the like who are the parents that want to do play dates? There's not enough of that existing. Yeah, and, and we need parks around the city and because you're, or you're I've spoken to enough parents that would really timing. want parks. Yeah, or you're on the group timing of like, oh, there's this like gym you can go to. 
and like yeah, they during have this it. time on like a Sunday or like a Tuesday when you should be working, this is the time that we're allowed to give you for. And it's just like, okay, well, that's not convenient at all. It's not, it's never convenient. And that's why I think people like, I think we're going to, even on that side, I, there are some people in the South Philadelphia area that are not interested in setting up play dates because there's just not enough out there. And I think our kids are tired of feeling so different themselves. Right. I mean, whether or not they can verbally kind of explain that to us, I know they're, they're aware of it. Right. I worked with autistic children who were able after so many sessions to verbalize to me that the reason why they had a fascination with like the bad character in something is because they feel different. Right. Yeah. And like the anti-hero themselves and they feel bad that everyone looks at the anti-hero badly. <laughs> like, it's really interesting. Like there's, so just being a therapist with children who had autism and just understanding that like, they're well aware that, that the world doesn't really fit or model like what works for them and that people are well aware of it themselves, whether or not it's obvious or not. So oh, yeah. it's time for them it's like to when really I went to the, um, community. the conference and the, 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 I think this teenager and he's nonverbal was people were asking him questions and just him answering was kind of heartbreaking because people were asking him questions like, well, how do you feel? Did, how did you feel when you thought people, you know, when people were just talking around you and thought you didn't understand? And then he responded like, I felt horrible. And then there was a sibling of um, someone who I made a friend with there, but um, a sibling of a child, I think he's seven and he's nonverbal. And so she was able to ask that question. And then that also kind of touched my heart because you have to think about the siblings of mm -hmm. like, you know, and kind of what they, the situation they're kind of in and how they want to see their sibling happy. And, you know, mm -hmm. and that, that mm -hmm. would, that would help them too. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, as a family therapist, I saw all the time, there'd be like one child who had the autism, sometimes more than one, but, and then the siblings and like the, the complex family dynamics that occur because your life has to change like yeah. to a certain degree um, when you have an autistic sibling in the household and the frustration for some of the siblings with the rules are different, yeah. like a little bit. And sometimes the rules are, you know, there's a baseline of, you can have like, as a family therapist, we, we taught here is the general rules. And then, you know, you are going to have to have a little bit of leeway on the meltdown for the sensory. Yeah. Too. You know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you are going to have to tell the sibling they can't blast like heavy rock music you know, when, you know, the child with autism is trying to do, do his study, you know, it's like, there's accommodations that are going to have to be made in every kind of situation, which I don't yeah. think. Is, and what we did, was we'd actually are the program that I worked for the um, CGRC um, family first program. We did therapy with the siblings and the parents because they needed, they needed time to process what was going on for them, different dynamics in the family. And then also how all of it impacted them, what it was yeah. like to be, a sibling of an autistic child who may or may not have had, they sometimes, you know, our children have multiple diagnoses. So it's, you know, it co-occurs with so many different other things. So, yeah. yeah. It's a shame Shari couldn't have joined us. Do you think she like tried to send the email? Cause I would send it to her. Um, did she send you her email address? Cause I don't know if I, if she has sent it to me or cause I had sent it to somebody, but I'm not sure if that, no. that was her. Yeah, if she, has sent she, it she did. She stopped chatting. To, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. We'll get her next time. Okay. That's how we're going to do this. Uh, we're kind of wrapping it up she, anyway. She, there we go. Yeah. So we got that. Um, so we have the QR code and the flyers. Cause I'm sure people can come back to this and kind of like listen to what we've talked about and kind of get some ideas so um, the QR code, people can either ask me or you because we have that um, to send the flyers. So I contacted um, Jefferson University or I've been talking to them when I had to do um, kind of this data thing that I did with them two weeks ago. But I sent them the flyer. So getting people to just give the flyer or print them out, give them to their church, you know, doctor's office. There's a lot of places where you'd be surprised where I tell them what I'm doing and they're just like, we need this because I know someone. So everyone mm -hmm. kind of knows someone who knows someone at this point. So if anything, everyone who's like watching this or part of this group should at least be like, I need to put this out there because that's how I can help people because mm -hmm. people want to know about this. Even that's in other true. cities and countries, you're seeing that people care <laughs> about this. So if anything, since we're all, you know, in Philly, we should at least try to do some groundwork, you know, where we can, do groundwork. So uh, as you already know, I share this petition with everyone kind of mm -hmm. every single day, even if I'm talking mm -hmm. to my insurance 
agent, I really don't care. Like you'd be surprised how many people love what we're doing and who want to yeah. be a part of it. Well, even we live and breathe it. Now. We live and breathe it, right? When you're, it's it's sort of easy for us to remember to be this way because like everything is about autism and our child, right? Like it's. Yeah, we're doing it for our kids. So it's almost kids. like a an expansion of what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's to me, like, I think for me and you, at least it's common sense. Now, maybe other parents, it's not right. They're, they're, they're just trying to get the IEPs and the 504s and, and life under control. And there's times when even we're too busy probably to spread the message. But I think, you know, even if we just try to keep it at the forefront. Yeah. Someone said, where's the petition? Oh, okay. So the petition should be on the page. I'll also put it on there or maybe, um, if you want to put, we could put a link in the comments so people can click on the petition, but it is on the page. Um, and then when you go to the petition and you click share, maybe I need to pin it. Yeah. When you go to the petition, you click share. That's how you can pretty much send it, copy the link and send it. So what I've been doing or what I was doing, or I probably will do this every once in a while. I'll send it to like 10 people in my Facebook messages, like just send them a link and then people will actually sign it right away. So sometimes that helps. So even if sending it to 10 people once a week or something like that, because you don't know who they'll send it to or take the flyer, send it in an email, you know, just there are a lot of different things, um, little small things, because this isn't anyone showing up anywhere. I haven't even asked people to show up at the school district with me yet because you already know I'm going back to the school district. That's that's going to be my playground. So when I can get people to uh, to come to the school district and speak with me because I did go to the district in April, then you know that's when people will have to have to show up places. But right now, while we're not having to physically show up, we can you know use social media to our advantage to uh, move our message around. But if anyone wants to go to the school board or wants to know how I did that or wants to show up with me next time, please let me know. I wish I could. That's harder. <clears throat> Maybe I'll, I'll have hard. to take a day. I might it's have to take a day. day. I would have to really plan. You would need half the day off. And I think even harder is who who's going to pick up my son, right? I would have to make multiple arrangements and I want to go, but it would take so much planning as a single mom of an yeah. autistic child to do it you would need to take half a day off and have honestly, someone all I don't that. think we have to be there physically you're you're literally can do the virtual yeah you could so do I a virtual for us I think for us forget the forget the in-person for most of us you know you did that because you you well your whole life is Austin at this point so it's yeah and it, and it and and honestly it needed to be done some things you can't get across done. in a video but <laughs> hey when I was watching you it was the virtual people the yeah. people on the screen that we're doing it. Does it have the same impact now? I mean, from you being there physically, but I think still, if that is what some of our parents and advocates do. on this group can do, then yeah. do it. Then we if need to do it. all you can do is sign up to do the virtual two minutes, because all they're giving you is two minutes. Yeah. And they're it's not really bad. Good. So if you're home, just have that space of time and then they'll like kind of click you in and then that's all. In. You speak yeah, if mind, you go, you it is going to be really difficult, especially parking around With there. With us, it's more like not speak your piece and speak your work. Because yeah. <laughs> so, <what? laughs> I mean, <laughs> Michael would be proud. I'm kind of punny. Uh, is this where he gets it from? Because, you know, that's my that's that's my buddy. He, he's a funny guy. He's he a guy from, I didn't think I was funny, but he must be. He gets it from somewhere. Head. So. <laughs> This is like a thing. Here. I'm not funny. Oh, no. Do you want to say hi to people in the group? Do you want to meet Constance? Okay. He's, he said I'm too lazy. You're not lazy. You're just whatever. Okay. Look, he's, in he's tired. He likes to decompress after school. We're going to call it decompressing after dinner. He's doing, he's doing his thing. That's so I think next time we get on here, um, we'll probably be able to have more people maybe doing we this. Like, on here. Why doing don't we this, put Austin like, and Michael on here? What'd you say? <laughs> We're going to put Austin and Michael on here next time. I know Austin is like upstairs getting his hair done. My mom is like kind of doing his hair right now. <laughs> What if next time, like, it's, we're getting it's, ready like, for that. He, he shows up for you and Michael shows up for me and they represent us. <laughs> there you go. Like, we're just going to be on here and be like, hey, we're going to get a lot of views that way. Watch. <laughs> Everyone would start showing up. <laughs> right. We're going to get a lot of views that way. 
Um, but yeah, so anyone that's watching this video, we're about to get around and wrap it up. Um, we're probably going to try to talk about doing this maybe once a week and getting more people on here um, just to kind of talk about the things that we've talked about this time, um, which is pushing the petition, the flyers, um, and just uh, even congressmen, which we didn't really talk about this time, but we can talk about that later on once we get that kind of, you know, we want to get people going. that we would need to really push these things to uh, different places. Mm -hmm. So, and if anyone it's has, gonna, it's going to take en masse. You're right. It's going to take a lot of people like sending these emails to the Congress people. Yeah, which people will do that. People will do it. We just need mm -hmm. the group to, you know, at least come up with a solid maybe ten people or even more than that. But it has to be a good solid to be able to do certain things to get what we would want. So what we're doing, you know, we're not doing it thinking it's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next year. It may happen two years from now or three years from now. And honestly, I may not be living in Philly by then, but I'm still going to be doing this. So even if it doesn't benefit my child, this is still something that okay. I'm putting energy to and I'm going to be doing because it needs to be done. So those people who also resonate with just that message and wanting to do what they need to do, those are the people that we need, really, really, really need to hop on board and, you know, give the energy that all these children could use because they could use what we're doing. Yes, they could. Yep. So it sounds good. Did you have anything um, you want to you want to uh, remind people of, Jessica, or anything? And no, no, I mean, just I just that, like, you know, start trying to join in, you know, grab, you know, and I think what we can do is I think someone is going to be like organizational, but it will be great for it to like, you know, flow out into, you know, people really giving us some ideas too. because if you think we're off track on the petition or something like that, you know, we can explain to you where that comes from. You know, some people look at these petitions and think, where does it go? But like Constance said, you talked to Representative State Rep Parker, who said, the more names you have, which is true. If anybody's ever been in politics, you're going to know this. And I was a poli state undergrad. So is Constance. You know, these things matter, right? You, you bring those signatures out there and, and you attach that to documentation and you show Harrisburg and you show these, these government bodies that the people are speaking, not just in Philly, but around the world and saying, why, why don't we have this? It's obvious that we need this, right? So, um, so that's why that petition matters. Just, just to kind of give people maybe a little bit, I, I was wondering why we didn't have as many signatures and I think we did a great job. I think everyone did a great job, but I was thinking, do people really know? Because I've seen those petitions and thought to myself, like, is this really like, where does this go? What does this do? But it actually serves a practical purpose, right? It does get the job done because the more of those signatures we have, that is what goes to politicians for them to decide what bills they push. So it's important to have that petition signed. It's important to email the Congress people and the state reps locally. All of that stuff really matters because if you get in their ears and in front of their eyes, that's what's going to create the push for in the school district of Philadelphia to put that building in place and really start. And, and beyond that building, out of that building, I think we see a vision of educators educating the rest of the schools because there's still going to be kids in every school. And first of all, we already know the rates, right? Don't we, we, we can't lie to ourselves at this point. What was it? Is it one in 64? I mean, I think the last data was one in 64 children. So autistic children are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Not going away. We're identifying them better. Um, you know, they're here. They're here to stay. They're in every school building in, in yeah. the country. So this isn't going away. We need, you know, people who are educated in it, concerned parents and advocates, people trained in it, mental professionals, educators to really become a part of an, a, like a movement to change the education these children are receiving in every building. Yeah. So this is just, you know, one of the the pieces. That's what I want to remind everybody that this is just really the beginning. So this is the beginning. There are a lot of pieces to it because I've been talking to some therapists and some people who are just thinking the same thing and everyone's kind of on board. So this could be pushing more people to want to go to school to become therapists because if there's a lack in that, then maybe we need to push for that. Or, you know, maybe we need to find some from outside the state and pay them some money to come in the state. But, you know, they have these in other 
towns and other counties. So it can be done. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's also what do we have to do as a city to help this happen? Because even us as parents of, you know, special needs children, a lot of us have different sort of work schedules. So even some of us could maybe get some work at a school like this and then you right. can probably work around your child, get trained in something, you know, uh -huh. get certified in something. But mm -hmm. there could be a lot of opportunities for us in a place like this. And we can, you know, we're really pioneering something that mm -hmm. should never be going and, away. And who, and who better school, than the parents? Trouble. Who better than the parents to be educating and, and providing the mental health supports for autistic children? Who, who, who would better understand it and, and be better at it than the parents? So, yeah. and I did want to say when I spoke with Darisha Parker, and I do have her, uh, her cell phone number, when she goes to Harrisburg, she needs more people around her to help her fight for things. Because if it's just her, then it's just like, you know, Jessica said, it's really just her. But mm -hmm. and she knows other congressmen who like have children with autism or who, who could be a part of this. But if I'm not there, if I'm not the person that's in their district, you know, they're listening, but they're not listening as much. So that's also another reason why, you know, finding out, you know, who else can reach out to their congressmen and getting them, you know, five congressmen are better than one or something like that. So, exactly. and this isn't I, a Republican or Democratic issue either, mm -hmm. which is something that she kind of had an issue with too. This is like, everyone needs to get on board. So this is bipartisan. Yeah. This is bipartisan. This is not, this is everyone's impacted by this issue across the board. You know, I work for an insurance company and um, they put into place a special needs um, team, you know, and, and a process to filter out and support special needs parents. Um, and, and that came from an initiative from a parent. Like, who is that? Michael Walzer. Who's the one that commented in the Facebook group? Michael, isn't he the one who's who's been a little bit more involved? He's actually. Oh, yeah. So hopefully he's watching. Maybe he missed it, but maybe we'll catch him the next time. Yeah. Um, we are the greatest advocates. You know, and, and so that that program in, you know, the largest healthcare insurance company in the world didn't exist until an executive had a child with autism who said, we need this. Right. Yeah. So it's our mouths. That's yeah. what happened. It's us speaking for them. So yeah. we really matter. It doesn't matter what industry we're in. It doesn't matter what part of it. I love that. Mm hmm. I really did. Really true, though. We need to hear that. Yes, I mean, from every background, right? And I was like, my, I was mind blown. I was like, okay, so this was an executive who did this. Yeah. Wow. Why? Oh, because his his you know child has autism, you know, and so it was a really cool experience for me to like realize, like you know, even in the company I was working for, there was such a push for, for that awareness for creating even in the insurance system more of what we need. So, and this is just what it is. And so then we're going to all, as parents, have to keep pushing these things, whether or not it's the executive and insurance company high up or, you know, just, you know, mental health therapists and educators that have children or, and those who just care. I mean, I've worked yeah. with so many people that don't have autistic children. You know, I have cousins that are in the education world that are absolutely brilliant as teachers, speech pathologist cousin, who, who's probably not watching right now, but... <laughs> But, you know, we don't care. He'll catch us eventually. But, you know, that really love working with children with autism. Yeah. And um, so, and I, you know, I, my clinical supervisor, she's absolutely brilliant. You know, she's somebody who, if our parents needed a therapist, or even if they wanted to send their young adults who have autism to, I would completely recommend her um, in a heartbeat. I have a whole network of private practice professionals who were trained at Child Guidance Resource Centers who are really a good go-to and they weren't just ABA training. It wasn't just ABA and behavioral specialty uh, training. We were trained in eco um, systemic structural family therapy, which is, we started right here in Philly in CHOP, which is one of the best family therapies. We really look at it very differently. Um, the training that we got than your standard like ABA kind of therapy, which, you know, it is hotly debated across the board. Some of it's good. So yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of it. We've seen that on a lot of different groups. We know. see it's a big, it's a big hot topic and I don't, I'm not getting into the hot topic. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, we have all those people and they care too. So hopefully we start getting some more involvement from them too, because, you know, even if they don't have an autistic child, there are so many people that I've met that are wonderful, that are really great with our children. Um, yeah. Who could really make a difference and start spreading the word and be a part of this. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. We're not at a month with the petition. We're already close to 900. So the fact that we're even there we're, is oh, awesome. Are we? 
I haven't checked it in a while. Yeah, we're close. We're close. I think we're at eight twenty-two or and we, we weren't even pushing. It's probably making some natural rounds at this point. Because oh yeah, and the and the donations, so that's the donations help, and attention. people are pushing it. So, and then doing stuff like this, you know, also helps um, as well. And I'm going to be breaking off and kind of doing podcasts um, to kind of get different people's opinions on some things, and through that, also pushing the petition. So, you know, even if you guys are doing your own kind of like thing with your job or work, you can still kind of push the petition if it kind of coincides with you know what you're doing. So I think especially like Jessica having some time with you to explain because you have a whole lot of experience, but, you know, just some things to be able to explain to some parents who really don't have the same sort of experience that you have um, that will be able to help some people even get more on board and, you know, comfortable maybe in their own lives so that they can like even think about doing this because it is stressful. It is stressful. So, I mean, I think I should. Yeah, I think it would be good for me to even go branch out. And so one of the things that I know me and you have talked about is even just doing the coaching piece of it because the coaching piece is important. The self-care piece, you know, what is self-care for an autistic parent? Yeah. It's, I mean, you me, know, you talk about it all the time, right? It's, pretty minimal. Sure it's, pre it. it's really pretty minimal, but then how do we do it? Yeah. I mean, we have figured out ways to do it. I've heard way worse circumstances. I've worked with parents that were in situations that looked at me like I was crazy when I used the word self-care. Yeah. And I don't blame them. They had a lot going on. Um, but there are ways to do it. You know, yeah. people will say, how do you work full time, run a private practice? Now you have an autism advocacy group. How are you doing all of this? You know, and it's like, you know, and still trying to take care of yourself. And it's like, somehow I do it. But it is it's it's super organized and make it a priority. And um, and really, you really should be doing an hour a day of something, even if yeah. it's just decompressing completely so that you can get organized and figure out how to tackle everything for yourself and your loved ones. Yeah. But, I think we should yeah, have we something probably, about that. We could talk some skill sets and things like that, but it, it has to be realistic. Cause yeah. I'm not going to, you know, you know me, I'm very, I'm very like, a, I'm a realist. So for me, any of the tips that I would give a parent would be really about how to fit that in a really practical way. Yeah. Well, how do you do it in a practical way? Or even maybe listening to some of the parents say to me, okay, this is my dilemma. This is what I do for a living. What, you know, what could I do that would actually, you know, be viable or even feasible with my current, you know, situation. So, and I would love to hear the parents start kind of giving us some feedback there so that we know about the different topics that we need to like start talking about. Right. Yeah. Them. I agree. Which what I do they want to hear? What do they want to push? Like, do they have any ideas we haven't like even brought up yet? Because if they're in our group, they have to, they have to have ideas. They have to have Yeah. Mom. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone that's watching this, leave a comment. Cause I'm sure you can leave a comment. Um, send us messages and we'll try to figure out between both of us, if we can um, maybe schedule a time out of the week and whether it's me or Jessica on here, um, I guess like kind of hosting it. Uh, it probably won't be this long. This is this long because of, you know, it being our first time, but we'll try to keep them pretty short too, especially if it's during the week because um, weekends are busy and it's summertime and stuff. So if we can do that, then I'll allow people to kind of know like, okay, this is the day and this is the time that we normally do it. So this is when I can come give my two cents, but we definitely mm -hmm. want people to come out and speak and stuff like that. So I would think um, Shari Adler is actually really, really well known in the South Philadelphia area. She's a resource queen who was just commenting. I would love if Shari, if you're still listening for you to even run one of these one day and just, you know, you're such, she's such a plethora of knowledge. Like she's plethora. My English teachers were <laughs> <But> <laughs> Mrs. Heck. shout out to Mrs. Hack. I can but, um, <laughs> so, but Shari Adler is one of those people who like everyone knows she's just, she's been in the community for so long. She's got such a knowledge of the resources. She would be great to run like a resource group if she felt like it, if she wants to get involved because she knows all of these different groups that we have. So, and how like the systems work. Yeah. So, I love her. That's, like, our hope. that's our vision is that like the people who are in our group can crawl sort of like slowly into the public eye. <laughs> um, and yeah. kind of bring some of their talents and their and their opinion and their mind into this to because more like the more the merrier the more minds this is going to expand so i agree i agree well thank you everybody for watching um comment and we'll keep you guys updated 
um, on what's going to happen in the future. So thanks, Jessica. Um, Thank it was fun doing this with you. Can't wait to do it again. It was fun. All right. <laughs> All righty. Bye.